On the night of December 12, 2023, the Milwaukee police were transporting a 26-year-old man from Providence Milwaukee Hospital in Milwaukee, Oregon, to the Unity Behavior Health Center in nearby Portland. Except that things would take a chilling and tragic turn when upon arrival to the Unity Center, the patient was found completely unresponsive. Thinking they could detect a faint pulse, officers subsequently would attempt to revive the patient. However, such efforts would prove to be too little too late. And at 11.31, Jean, or as everyone in the video calls him, Jean, de Camp, was pronounced dead. At this point, if you're like most people, you're probably wondering what exactly happened between the time that de Camp left the hospital and the time that the squad car reached the Unity Center about 13 minutes later. Then again, as body cam footage from that night will attest to, perhaps a more appropriate question to ask is, what happened at the hospital? And how in a million years could the hospital have thought the man looked medically well enough to be let go? Said body cam footage that follows was only recently released by the Milwaukee PD. With pending requests from all the local media channels, the police department had stated that they wanted to ensure that the victim's family was able to view it first, which sounds reasonable as far as I'm aware. The department has stated that, in their words roughly, letting people view this footage is in the spirit of their commitment to total transparency. There are a couple parts wherein some of the information is redacted, that's due to medical privacy laws, but for most people I don't think it does anything to alter the substantial details of the case or what have you. Just a few quick points that it might benefit people to know or to have cleared up. Well, there's one thing that never does get mentioned because of course there was no way to know at the time, and it's regarding what we end up learning is Decomp's cause of death. In spite of Decomp's being homeless, which is also a relevant bit of information, and in spite of his ongoing battle as an addict, I still was myself rather shocked to learn that while the toxicology report still pens, the medical examiner has ruled that Decomp's death was the result of an OD. The implications of this, especially as you get more familiarized with the footage and the story, are incredibly vast. Personally, I don't even know how to wrap my mind around it. An OD? Seriously? When? How? How is it possible for an entire hospital staff to be able to stand there totally unequipped to recognize the signs of a freaking OD? There's one more related fact that, that I haven't heard anyone mention anything about, but which I feel might be pretty telling. It's easy to miss because, let's face it, it's a long video with a lot going on, but there's a relatively early scene where officers are standing outside of the ER. There's a quick mention of the hospital staff telling that they had previously administered Narcan to the patient. Okay, so for those who aren't familiar with any of this, Narcan, also known as naloxone, is administered to patients suspected or known to be ODing on opiates. I don't know how many of you all have seen the movie Pulp Fiction and remember that scene where Uma Thurman's character sort of, you know, and Travolta drives to his dealer's house and they stab her frantically in the chest with that big honking spike and say it's an adrenaline shot and she kind of jolts right up, suddenly having come back to life. <laughs> Well, that's kind of an exaggeration, but you can picture that being maybe like an idea of how an Arcan shot might work. First off, nobody ever springs to life like in that scene, but it does help to reverse the effects of an opiate overdose. Just wake up. Yeah, okay, I'll wake up. Naloxone is not adrenaline, but rather it works as an antidote by temporarily blocking the opiate from working, thereby also temporarily reversing the opiate's effects. Like for example, if someone has stopped breathing, It'll restore their breathing, etc. Depending what and how much a patient took, several doses may be needed to revive the patient. The two common routes of administration of naloxone are either intranasally through the nose or intramuscularly, that is, in essence, by using a syringe to deposit it into the patient's muscle. Studies have shown the latter method to be more effective even given the same dosage. Nonetheless, the intranasal method seems to be the one most commonly used among law enforcement. Of course, we don't really know what kind the hospital supposedly used on decomp. Either way, and regardless of how much is given, ideally a patient must be monitored carefully as the naloxone starts to wear off, which happens roughly about an hour after the dose is administered. In knowing that, now think about the following. A. The hospital staff claims Decomp walked himself into the facility all amiable and whatnot with no assistance whatsoever. B. If that's true, he obviously wasn't ODing at that time, and so they probably didn't administer the Narcan then. Alright, so C. Then at what point did they administer the Narcan? At what point did they feel that they had a need to do so? Well, it had to have been just prior to them calling the police. This doesn't make any sense, at least not the way the hospital tells it. What does make sense is that they administered Narcan because they thought he was ODing, which he was. But now, if they did this, that's an admission they knew he was ODing, but if they knew he was ODing, how could they continue to say he was cleared for discharge when the man was, to anyone who's ever seen an OD before, clearly still ODing? And now, for example, a fentanyl overdose, let's say, can sometimes take as many as four doses of Narcan for the patient to be completely revived. My guess, just by what I've been able to see and hear, is that the man needed more Narcan. 
Especially if the opiate is strong enough, it's not uncommon for a patient to resume ODing after their initial dose or doses of Narcan have worn off. You may even have seen some of the videos floating around online, which depict police officers requiring multiple doses themselves following accidental ingestion of fentanyl during an accidental exposure. It's dramatic body cam video of a deputy sheriff collapsing to the ground. He and his partner were making a drug arrest when he suddenly has trouble breathing. I got you, okay? I'm not gonna let you die. The deputy was believed to be suffering from an accidental overdose after being exposed to the deadly opioid fentanyl. I need Narcan! His partner began administering Narcan, a medication that works like magic to block the effects of an opioid overdose. Fire department got there, put him on the gurney, his eyes rolled back in his head, and he started to OD again. And he was ODing the whole way to the hospital. It's only my opinion that it almost sounds like the emergency staff actually knew what was going on, in which case I just have to wonder, why didn't they administer another dose? I'm going to leave that last question up for speculation. I do have my own personal theory as to what I think most likely may have happened on this night, but that would need to wait for a supplementary, more reactionary type of video, to which again we'll just have to see. It is standard procedure when a patient is ODing or has just OD'd not to let them go until certain criteria have been met, which show that they're literally able to stand on their own two feet and go. One study published on PubMed concludes the following, quote, for those patients treated in the ED for opioid overdose, an observation period of one hour is sufficient if they ambulate as usual, have normal vital signs, and a Glasgow coma scale of 15, end quote. And don't worry too much about the meaning of that last criterion. Just trust me on this one, that day comp, it was obvious, met not a single one of those criteria for discharge. But I'll just let you see that for yourself in just moments. Keep in mind the fact that when Narcan wears off, which takes roughly about an hour, depending on how much was given. The patient runs a risk of ODing all over again due to the fact that, as already explained, what Narcan does is it blocks the opiate from acting on the body any further, but only for a limited duration of time. Call people in the middle of the night. Hey. Breathe. Come on, breathe. Hit her again. Hey. Rodney, she's not breathing. Hit her again. Out again. Yes. Can they hurry? Come on, Mark. There you go. I'm about tired of shooting shit in your nose, girl. You gotta get up. Let me go grab another one. We got I here. got one. Got one on deck. That's my two. Have you got another one? Got another one. Okay. I do not know the laws governing malpractice, but if there was a doctor there who suspected this patient might be ODing, and that doctor administered a dose of Narcan, then to subsequently clear the patient for discharge would be, in my mind, not only malpractice, but potentially even criminal. Let me emphasize that this is my opinion in terms of just how wrong of an act I think it is. Whether it's truly criminal or not criminal, like I said, I have no idea, but it should be, in my opinion, if done knowingly. Well, now that you've been given the whole little impromptu Narcan lecture, another thing that is brought up on the recording, but maybe often veiled in medical terminology, is the fact that the hospital staff actually claim to believe that Decomp is faking his symptoms. Something that, again, doesn't jive with the notion of them administering him Narcan, but, oh well, let's just pretend that never happened for a minute. Once again, you mean to tell me that an entire emergency room full of medically trained professionals are asserting with a straight face that the symptoms you're about to see this man exhibiting could possibly be feigned? It's rather remarkable. There will be one point in this footage where an arrogant sounding male voice asserts to one officer that this isn't a medical problem due to his warped conviction that the patient is malingering. I'm drawing attention to this specifically because I've seen news broadcasts where the transcript gets this wrong and where it reads that the man says that the patient is a lingering. This led me to figure it out to quickly explain that malingering is a fancy medical term for faking an illness. And of course we learn later that Decomp was by no means malingering. As a super quick aside, since everyone except the staff at Providence in Milwaukee could clearly see that Decomp was in dire, critical need of medical attention, I'm sorry, but it almost seriously comes across as if maybe it's not that they didn't see it, but that for some reason they didn't want to, which is, for a lack of a better term, really frightening. And then finally, in another part, you can also clearly hear hospital staff insisting that the symptoms Decomp is exhibiting are 100% behavioral. This, again, simply equates more or less to an accusation that he's merely pretending to be unresponsive, that he was deliberately now drooling on himself, letting or even forcing the snot just drip out of his nose in these coagulated globules, etc. At the end of the day, to me, what happened at Providence, Milwaukee that night is just so ridiculously disgusting. 
It just feels like it's something that people need to know. That's why right now, even though there's so much more that could be said, without any further ado, here is courtesy of the Milwaukee Police Department, the full body-worn camera footage from one officer, Cleary, taken on the night of the untimely and sickeningly preventable death of 26-year-old Jean Michael DeCamp. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah, Nineteen this way. Yes. Nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took me a minute to realize what we were doing here. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Are you the one? Um, care no, but I'll call if they, uh... Hey man. Do you guys need a little bit of a report? Yeah, please. Okay, so Gene DeCamp came in homeless, needed some, some cleaning up. He had feces all over himself. Um, he showered in this bathroom right here. Uh, he's relatively okay on his feet. Um, but we got him all cleaned up. We got him in bed, got him fed, and got him uh, antibiotic. wheelchair we picked him back up and put him in the wheelchair he volitionally forced himself out of the wheelchair again where was, was where were you transporting him to he was being discharged we okay were just out into a, a homeless shelter yes homeless. okay he was going to get a right to a homeless shelter and then he refused to leave um he was pleasant he was um conversant the entire time until right when uh his discharge arrived um he's been evaluated medically there's no medical problems for him um, this is a chronic problem he's not thriving chronically, but um, there's no medical reason for him to be here anymore. Um, and it's all behavioral. Yep, 100% behavioral. Mm. You think the jail's gonna... You say he's making clear? Mm. What's that? Say he's making clear. Right. Mm. Right. What's his name? Gene. 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 Yeah. Thank you guys for all right, your you help. Thank you so much. Hey, Gene. Mm. Hey, Gene, can you hear me? Can you look at me, buddy? Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. 
Hey, Gene. I'm Officer Cleary with Milwaukee Police. Can you hear me? You're going to be all right, buddy. Can you hear me? I'm Officer Cleary with Milwaukee Police. Can you hear me okay? Trying to get you out of here, bud. You ready to go? What's going on, man? You ready to get out of here? No? This is about, he's a little more tired than he was previously, um, but no, this is, this is, this is, this is. Hey, Gene. Hey, man, I'm Tim with Milwaukee Police. Can you respond to me, buddy? Showering, he was just like, he was just I think he like thought that if he stopped walking, like he was just like, that's what he said, like he was trying to do. Uh, because we saw him walk. So you're calling, you tell me what you want to do. Let's just listen to what they're saying. I don't think, I don't think the jail is going to take him. I'm trying to figure out if the jail will take him or not. Okay. That's, that's the biggest thing I'm trying to figure out. So how would you figure that out? Um, I mean, probably, I guess trying to figure out if, uh, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out if. What do you think a step would be to figure out if the jail would take him? Probably call him. Yeah, maybe calling the jail. That'd be a good idea. I mean, I think he's okay with Officer A come here for a second. Yeah. Maybe give him a call. Let yeah. him know kind of the circumstances and what you got. But then you also have to think what's your other option if you have to go to jail, right? So, yeah, I mean, so it's. You can call. I have the number if you want to. I have jail. it in here. Okay. Yeah, I have it in you here. You can ask them, tell them what's going on and like what you're observing and see if they'll accept him with the discharge paperwork. I don't think so either. Sometimes I have to call. pretty good. Yeah. That's for sure. The Oscar goes to. He wanted one way or the other. We got to get him out of here. Oh, this is Justin. Thank you. Hey, Gene. I'm Officer Campos, Milwaukee Police. So the thing is, you have a warrant, okay? So you can either go to the shelter or we can take you to jail. Which one do you want? Huh? But you can't stay here today. Can you tell me which one? Now's your time. Hello? Yeah. Oh, my phone just went dead on me. Hey, this is uh, Tim Cleary with Milwaukee Police. Um, I've got a, uh, a gentleman here at uh, Milwaukee Prov who uh, was brought in here um, with some drug situations. Uh, he's he has a warrant. Um, he's medically cleared, um, but his ability to walk is a little bit suspect. Um, he's uh, not real responsive, not real verbal, not answering a lot of my questions or any of my questions, uh, I should say. So uh, I'm just trying to figure out whether uh, or not you guys would, if he's medically cleared, would you take him? Would you be able to take him? Right, right. Okay. 
Got it. Right, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. So, um, okay, that helps me a lot. Right, right, exactly. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay, bye bye. He said if he's not verbal, not responsive, there's. He doesn't think they're going to take him. That's kind of what I thought. Um, now, so you have options. What are your options that are left? Take him to the homeless, your homeless shelter. Do you want some chucks for the seat? Uh, he's probably not going to go under our car. Um, depending. So you can either uh, do what? What are, what are the options left if you can't go to jail? Side release. Go to the homeless shelter. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Or be cold outside, right? Right. So right. let's explain that to him, and then if he doesn't choose one or the other, um, you may have to choose for him. Got it. Okay. Hey, Gene, it's Officer Clear again, okay? I need you to listen to me if you can, all right, bud? So here's the deal. You can either uh, go to the homeless shelter, all right? Or you can go outside and be cold, but you can't stay here. Okay? You want to go to the? Do you want to go to the homeless shelter? You want to go outside? <laughs> Which one? What does what does that mean? Which one do you want? Because you can't stay in here anymore. Okay? You're medically you've medically been released, so we got to get you out of here. So. It's either go to the shelter or go outside. Mm -hmm. Go to the shelter. Go outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would just make that decision for him. Yeah, yeah. So if Melissa, so, uh, if we go to the, if we decide on a homeless shelter, do we do we normally just transport there? Is that what we do? Um, we'll have to talk to the doctor. They have a right to okay. it. Assist getting him into the wheelchair and into that. Okay. Nazarene. Nazarene. Is that in Portland? I'm unfamiliar with it. So. Okay. Do we need to get? We need to get a psycho, right? To take with them, or do we just? They were like you, you can say release him now, and then you can ask for the other one. That's the FTA. You can ask if you can say release for that as well. One of them. Uh, so one strictly a psych release. Okay. Right. And then one is an FTA. Right. Um, I don't know. Really out of. So that one is that a ask if okay. you can cite and release on as well. Okay. Which it's actually an officer's choice if they want to cite and release or not. Well, no, so. I mean, I so I can just do it, I, or do I, but I need so to check and see so if it's... Yeah, okay. I'm going to step out of here. Just for a second, yeah. Three, Mary, two. On the FTA, uh, I want to cite and release on this one. Is that something you could check to see if that's doable? Mm -hmm. Tell them that jails uh, told you they probably wouldn't take it. Thank you. The jail probably won't take him. Um, probably should go get started on the paperwork now while we're sitting here waiting. Huh? Well using your acronym, what's important now, what's important now. He's Wait. been wanted, he's been Get him out of here. Okay. Sign and release. Mm -hmm. um, try to get him to that shelter. They, they did have transport to him to the. Yeah, he came. Transport came. And then <clears throat> they left. Already. Yeah, because he was. Uh, do you want to stay in the wheelchair? Do you want to fill out your paperwork first, or do you want to get him in the chair and then you're going to do it? Or? Well, I think we need to get him out of here first. 
Well, the no. hospital's going to give him a ride, right? Let me just double check, Steve. Uh, yeah. No. That option's done. That option's done. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What she said? You can start filling out the site. Okay. All right. So you want to, are you going to do that? Yeah, I'm going to site and release. We'll okay, so as soon as you can get them to. Oh, okay, I got you. Three mirror two to one mirror five. I copy that. All right, let's get them out of here. All right, Gene. You want to put them in cuffs? Yeah, let's do that. Gene, we're going to sit you up, okay? I think these fold down. I don't know how, so don't listen to me then. Yeah. Watch your leg, Gene. I'm going to pick your leg up, all right, bud? You want to roll them off to this side? Yeah. All right, come on, Gene. You ready? Can you stand up for me? I'll get you in this chair. Come All right, here, Gene. Buddy. Come on. I need you to get up. There you go. There you go. Let's go. Your legs. Your legs are good. Should we just cuff them right here? Might as well. Yeah. So we're gonna have to. Here. Gene. I got him. Falling head first. There you go. Just like that. Watch your head, Gene. There you go. All right. Let's get him up. All right. Yeah, let's get him up. Come on, Gene. All right, buddy. Let's sit you right here in this wheelchair. Watch your head. <clears throat> there you go, bud. Sit him up. Yep. Here. There you go. Let's get your feet up on here. Watch your feet, Gene. Gene, let's get your feet up on these things, all right, bud? There you go. Just hold him up for me, bro. Just get up here. Kick in the face. There you go, bud. Keep your feet up on there. Keep your feet up on there for me, G. Watch your foot, bud. Hey, Gene. Keep your foot up on there. It looks like you got enough strength to know what you're doing. Let's keep our leg on here for you. Thank you. Let's stop taking it off, okay? You have to put it in the coat, yeah. Thanks, bye. Keep your feet up on there. Hey, Gene, keep your feet up on there. It's okay, I'm just going to put them in the front. 
Well, Melissa's right in sight, and we'll put them in there. And she's going to write it? Yeah, she's writing it for me. And then, uh, keep your foot up on there. Watch your head. Yeah, yeah. No. You do, keep your foot up on there. So, uh, let's just wheel them over by the car. To the car? Yeah, to my rig. Okay, then. And I'll transport them out. Figure out which. To the homeless shelter. Oh, okay. You're going to do that? Yeah. Gotcha. Keep your feet up. Mm. Alright, I need to search him up. This should be fun. Hey guys. Yo. Do you at all feel comfortable with anything that's going on right now? No. Okay. Who's somebody we could call to probably help with guidance? Thank you, because I was just about to. DHS? No. Glenn? Think thinks more within our department. On shift right now. Sergeant. They could probably give us yeah, some guidance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We should probably get a sergeant. Yeah, that's a good idea. What we can do. Okay. They, they won't take him to jail. Should I just have him come this way or just talk to him? And you can give him a call this way so we can figure it out. It's, uh... Yeah. Is the lock on? <clears throat> Bob. Three married two to nine three. Could you come up to uh, Providence, Milwaukee? If you want, I can get them. If you want to hang out with them, I'll get them one of those like white blankets. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Hang in there, Gene. We're going to get you a blanket, all right? Go ahead. Copy, thank you. Hold on, Gene, all right? You want to sit up a little straighter? Sit up a little straighter so you're more comfortable. All right, Gene. There you go. Yeah, use your feet. That's good. So the warrant is confirmed, or that you can do that, right? Yeah. The next thing you probably want to do is make sure he is who he is. He's not. Okay. Um, well, I mean, Tim can explain it, but I'll, I'll go. He has two warrants. One's a second release that I'm going to go. One is now going to be a second release that I'm going to go. The issue is, is we're looking at what our next step would be. At least pretty much not normal. We just slumped over in a chair. And we can't just do it in front of the hospital. They've already treated him. Yeah. They were going to him, and they were going to give him a ride to the uh, homeless shelter. Um, but he parked that day. The ride. That's. I think that's what Tim was going to do was give him a ride. Just take him it's to the just, homeless shelter. But the thing is, is he's acting like his legs are just completely not working. Uh, that's the. I mean, he won't stand. He won't talk. Nothing. Um, what a, a homeless shelter? They'll take him in, won't they? 
Yeah. Is that what your thoughts are? Just roll into the home shelter? Yeah. Okay. No. Maybe Unity is a good option for him, huh? Huh? <clears throat> yeah. No, he's not saying anything. I think a lot of it's dry. They narcan them earlier. Yeah, I mean, he's not in any condition to be released. Which homeless shelter would you take him to? Get some birds, huh? Okay. I'm going to have them unconfirm those warrants if that's okay. There's no way mm. he's even coherent enough to receive a citation right now. Okay. And I'm going to zip out of here unless you guys do Thanks, anything. Melissa. <laughs> All right, you're good. We'll take care of it. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your knowledge and help. And wisdom. Um, so, any, I mean, six and burn size, I, I, I can look it up. Don't worry about it. I just didn't know if there was like a specific place we're supposed to go. Okay, okay. No. Sorry, I should have told you a little more on the phone. All right. Unity. You help him get in my, my district. Car and uh, I'll just do it. No, nah, I don't mind doing it. I'll do it. It's my, dis yeah. my district. Two hours, hour and a half. It's all right. I'll yeah, do it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. What we got? Well, I want to get him searched. We probably can search him right here. Huh? I've been trying to stand him up. I mean, he's in shorts. It's just. Fuck. I got him. I got him. Um. You know he's got nothing in his in his legs. Yeah, but I need to search. Yeah, I'm gonna double lock him now. Can you hold him up? Let me just do a, as good a search as I can do right here. I got him. Get under here, Gene, okay? All right, Gene, we're going to get you up and put you in the back of the car, okay? Let's get him as close as we can to the car first yep. with the wheelchair. Yeah, good idea. Okay.
Got him. Alright, let's get our legs up, Gene. He's just dragging them. Yeah. There you go. And then you want to turn them towards it. So you want to get them right here and turn them towards it so you can just. Just about like that. You just move them a little bit so I can get in there on the other side of the There we go. All right, Gene, we're going to get you up. Walk on. Yep. I'm going to get you up. It's on. One, two, three. There you go. You got to support his lower half. Yeah. Oh. Support his upper half. Is yeah, I got his upper. Okay. Fucking idiot. There we go. Tim, support his lower half. Okay, I got you. Okay. There we go. That's the other leg. Gotta get that other leg. You hold him I got you. I got you. I'm gonna go on the other side. You got him? Yep, I got him. Get under here, Gene. Get his other so get his get his inner leg in first. Yep. I got him, Alan. I got him. Okay, here we go. There we go. Here we are. Now, let's get him strapped down here. Yeah. Let me get this seat down. So did, the, did the nurse give you the, his discharge paperwork? I'll check and see. Not yet, but... Okay, Gene, I want you to sit up the best you can, okay? Alright, you good? You got it? Yep, I got him. Okay, buddy, I'm gonna close the door. Alright. Yeah, I got the nice and tight. I think so. As good as I can get it. I almost <laughs> good job. I almost let that one go. Uh his stuff is right here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I got his discharge papers. You wanna get his stuff in the back? Yeah. Thanks, brother. Brad, I'm just going to go make sure I got the discharge paper. Providence Milwaukee Hospital Emergency Department. Hello? If you are a physician calling, please press. If you are returning a call or have. We had him set up with a shelter, a cab to take him to the shelter, uh -huh. and he didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay here all night, and so that's how that went for him. It's not really a medical problem. It's malingering. It's not really a police yeah. problem. Yeah, it's not a police problem either. No, it's, uh, it's not. It's a community problem. Could I get his uh, discharge papers? Um, 
I think that we give it to him. You couldn't have given it to him. I don't think. He couldn't hold on to anything. Isaiah. Could you? Thank you. Isaiah? What is it that he's supposed to I just need his discharge papers. Oh, sure. Yeah. Call Isaiah back. Okay. Thanks, you guys. He's pulling it. He's pulling it. Thank you. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what i Appreciate it, man. Thanks. So you think he's just full of it? He's just bullshitting? Well, he was not like that at yeah. all. And then literally, like, right as the transport showed up, I said, hey, you're right, is here. I think, honestly, even that he was fine with, but I told him to church. And it seemed, he seemed to just, like, sniff. Gotcha. And just get, like, against everything. Uh, I don't know if maybe, if he's been there before, maybe. I mean, it's a homeless shelter. It seems like it's pretty popular. Yeah. Which one was it? Uh, Do you know? The Church of Nazarene. Is that local? Portland? I think so. Yeah. Church of uh, Nazarene. Okay. If our social worker is there, she's the one that got here with me. Probably the supervisor. Hold off on the thing for 10 minutes. Let me check. Okay. Yes.
one while we're gone? We'll take them. Okay. You know what you're thinking still, right? Yeah. Okay. Get the discount. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. He he was printing them, and I ran in there. Let me see. Um, hold on, hold on. Oh, you got those uh, dishes? Why, why do you want the paper ones again? I just, I just to know. I just need to take it with him because we're going to try to take him over to Unity. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's yeah. fine. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, that. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you for the help. Yeah, you bet. Sorry, you guys are going through it, man. <laughs> it's a tough, bro. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the help. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, just the guy just going crazy. What's well, Primo or Prima? I mean, cousin, I think. Cousins. Cousin. There you go, Brad. I, I looked it up. It means most important. Primo. Prima. 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 All hell's breaking loose. All hell's breaking loose. I did not. Uh, okay. I'll do that. To make sure that Unity takes him. Because wh what's the reason for taking him? He hasn't said he's going to kill himself or hurt anybody, right? In fact, he hasn't said anything. He's drooling on himself involuntarily. Right. So we're going to have to POH him. Okay. For his safety. Got it. Hold on for I'll take care of that, Brad. Feces? No, the his shit. I'm already all dirty. You're not, so. No, No, I know, but let me lift it so you don't have to mess with it. That's what I'm saying. I think we're good, man. Let's take them to Unity. Thanks for all your help. Let's grab another, there should be a trash bag in there, plastic trash bag in the drawer. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Do you need the on still? Not yet. No, I will, though. Do you need me to put them on? No. What's the trash bag? Primary two.
Do you have custody time on this? I'm sorry. Yeah, we uh, we're doing a POH on this subject. Copy. Thank you. What I was talking about, right? I am. Should I put transport into Unity in here at all, or? Mr. Just can't.
say when uh, Gene. J E A N. Gene. 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 Not responsive.
You want to take a look at that real quick? Just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. Gene. Yep, I got it. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't look at me. Free Mary too. Leave those down. Transport to Unity Hospital, starting mileage 3266. Primary two. This is going to be a POH.
I don't have any body camera footage, I don't think. Okay. It, um, it might be, but it's dead, so okay. I won't know until tomorrow. Okay. See that little yellow Let's and see white it. sign? Okay.
want to stay here and I'll go in, or one of us needs to stay with him, right? I'll stay here. You okay. go in and uh, tell him we're going to need a wheelchair. Okay. Not like we just Okay. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. What do you need me to do? Um, are you guys bringing a patient in? Yeah. All right. I'm probably just going to screen here and them. Check he, he, he's going to be unable to walk. He's going to need a wheelchair. He's, he's in bad shape. Okay. He's POH? Yeah, POH. Yeah. Um, to the A-Bay and then you can do... He's, uh, I mean, he can't even, like, he can't walk or anything. Okay. We'll come get him with a uh, ramp, but I'll POH just go through the A-Bay. Okay. So uh, what do I need to do? Just pull yeah, pull the car up there here, in the A-Bay? Uh, your partner can, and if you want to give info to patient access, they'll start checking them in. Okay. And they'll come get them. Okay. We'll probably walk out with them to bring them in. Sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. No worries. You want to pull it into a, a back it into A Bay, and I'll get the paperwork started right here. You back it up. Okay. What paperwork do you want? Uh, just the me- I think they just want the medical, probably the medical history. Okay. So so you just give this to them. Okay. Got it. Thanks, bro. Hey, Gene, they're going to come get you, all right? Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. Mark it. I got you. Hey, Gene. Let's get it out. Okay. 
KG. Hey, Gene. I got one. Got one? I think so, yeah. Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. Boy, I don't know, Brad. I don't know. Look at, his, look at his eyes. I don't know. Brain brain two breaks. Can you call in the unity and tell them we need some medical out here right now? Hey, Gene. Oh, I think I feel it real faint. See if you got one. No. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know. He's real non-responsive. Yep, I got you. Green mark two secure. Let me know when you want me to take it. Yeah, it's not good. If we can get some doctors or something out here, that'd be great. Yeah, I am a physician. I think we need to do it like we did call 911. You know, we want me to go, Brad. I'm with them, I got it. Got about another 30 seconds. Okay. Come on, buddy. Ready? Yep. Hey, from we've got medical at Unity. Feels the second pass. Stay clear of patient wounds. Analyzing heart rhythm. Stay clear of patient Analyzing heart rhythm. No shot at all. Be assured emergency medical services have been called. It is three married two. They're doing A D. Go ahead. We are at uh, Unity now, and we've got medical staff here working on him. Stand by.
Do we need AMR or anything like that? Over? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can we get hit something from under his head so I gotta tilt his chin again? Three Mary Two, they've called AMR here from Unity too. It's okay, I mean we're just yeah, it's totally fine. Is that gonna keep you tied? Can somebody grab a fresh blanket? Yeah. Who's okay, who wants to switch out with me? I can. Thank you. 
Hey, Brad. You want to use mine? In the car? Before CGI started. Just that we pulled up and then pulled right into here. Okay. Has he not been talking? Before? No, he hasn't been talking since he since we left the hospital. That's why we brought him here. He would be moved. Yeah. Tried to take him back to the hospital. They refused to care. Okay. Super She's like cactic right now. You got any vitals at all on him? No. Sugar is.
Got to start taking pictures of the scene. Get pictures of all the, the discharge paperwork, every paper. They have it, right? Sir, can I get uh, can I get pictures of that discharge paperwork? Yeah, I've turned it over to them. I don't have control over it okay. at the minute. Okay. Is there is there any possibility we can get uh, either a copy or pictures of the discharge paperwork for our reports and all that stuff? From Providence? Or from yeah, I brought them over with me from Providence. Uh -huh. And we gave them to him, and I think he turned them over to somebody. So I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I can get a copy. Of, like the after the summary that he would have gotten? Yeah, just the same thing I brought over. Okay. Yeah. They're going to get us a copy of a picture of every page. Okay. No, they, they didn't. I, I didn't have an ID from. They're getting his paperwork though. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. She gave me this copy. Okay. 
should I, I his ID could be in his shit uh, what? stuff his ID could be in his stuff I, no they just wanted his name date of birth and stuff get his name, date of birth, and all that that they needed? They should. Okay. They got a full face from his history. Okay, cool. Get the AMR number, medic number, Portland Fire number, Okay. Okay.
1244. The dispatch note. You see the back of Three Mary 2. Time of death on this is going to be 11.31 p.m. Get up there and chase the man. Okay. situation where you are uncomfortable with that patient, yeah. they refuse him, you can call 911. And, and we understand, you know, coming from somebody else, calling from a hospital, we get annoyed, but coming from you guys, we would not be able yeah. to okay. call. We are happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. We were, uh, so... Providence, uh, Milwaukee Prov was saying that as soon as they told him he was being discharged is when they said he started playing possum. We got there, my, we had my supervisor and three other cops there. We're all going, this is bullshit. And so the supervisor was like, take him back in the hospital. And they refused him. So they were like, you're going to just drop him off at a bus stop, let him freeze tonight. I mean, he's not verbal. He's not talking. He's got in involuntary, involuntary drool. And they're like, nope, there's nothing wrong with him. So then we're like, we're, our last option is a POH. You know, so we brought him here. Yeah, you guys did everything right. I mean, they, it, they I, use I, the words medically clear. Right he's medically it. fine. We're like, it's not medically fine, you know. For 13 years I've been there, and I've told everybody at my department, if something ever goes wrong with me, do not take me to that hospital. We take people in there for POHs that are like legit, running in front of cars, uh, saying they're going to jump off a bridge or stripping their clothes off, and they're out in 20 minutes. Uh, it just pisses me off. That, that guy does not need to be dead right now. This is most likely going to come back. Their, to their, their mindset there is, oh, it's just another tweaker. Yep. It doesn't fucking matter if they're another tweaker.
went through TLO, found possible mom and sister. She's going to put it in the call. Okay. So how does Portland do this? Are, are you guys, is Fire calling uh, the ME? Or? Yeah, he's on the phone with the ME right now. Um, I'm going to hang out and wait to make sure that... However long it takes the ME, that's what he sits with them. I can do that, no problem. Um, I appreciate the help because yeah. we're not familiar with how you guys do yeah, it. Yeah, in absolutely. And just to let you know, like, now that people aren't around for this, most likely we'll come back from the hospital for that. I hope so. Yeah. This is bullshit. Yeah. This, this, I've been, I've been saying for years, it's a matter of time before they, they refuse to give care and make us do something. Yeah. And then they put you in a fucking compromising situation and you're like, Yeah, because now he's in else, our care. Yeah, what else am I going to do? If yeah. You can't just put him out on the street. Look at him. Yeah. He's totally emaciated. Yeah. He's got lesions on him. I mean, yeah. He's got a scar on the back of his neck that goes up into his cranium like he's got a TBI from a previous incident. I mean, yeah. I, I, at this point, I just need to keep my mouth shut because I'm fucking pissed off. You have ever to be Yeah, I just got back to the station and I heard it drop and they didn't we didn't have a medic to come so I was like just come up and help, you know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I gotta find some water or something. Okay. There's a, there's a room right here. 